Welcome back. This is a continuation video that further describes how to create UML diagrams, specifically class diagrams, to represent phenomena in the real world in order to enhance understanding of databases that would be created or would be used from that diagram. In this video, we're going to explain what multiplicities are. The official definition for multiplicities is here, a specification of the number of possible occurrences of a property or the number of allowable elements that may participate in a relationship. What this really means is that we're going to specify the minimum and the maximum number of times that two classes can be related to each other. From a minimum, if the minimum number, if the association is mandatory, then the minimum number would be one. If the association is optional, meaning that the relationship doesn't have to exist, then the minimum multiplicity would be zero. For the maximum value of the multiplicities, um, if the maximum is zero, that means that this association is forbidden. What you'll see more often is that there's a maximum of only one association allowed between the classes, or that there could be many associations allowed between the classes. So we're going to represent multiplicities as the minimum and the maximum number of times one class can be related to another. Now this may sound really confusing, so I want to go through a number of examples to help you understand what multiplicities really mean. So let's continue our hospital example, but focus on just one association, the association between our operating room and our operation. Remember that the operation is an economic event which uses up some of our resources, in this case, the operating room. Now, in order to specify multiplicity, we have to understand how many times could an operating room be associated with an operation, and then we'll look at it the reverse path, how many times could an operation be related to an operating room. What this really means is that you have to be able to tell the story of how does the business operate. So think about an operating room is used to perform how many operations. And when you say that how many, you want to be thinking about what's the minimum number and what's the maximum. So think for a moment about what would the minimum. Could there be an operating room which has never been used for an operation? Think about the maximum. Could one operating room be used for multiple operations? Okay. If we say the sentence an operating room is used to perform at m the fewest of zero operations. So when you're creating a new hospital, you could physically have an operating room, which at one point in time has never been used for an operation. But over a period of time, you would expect that operating room to be used for many operations. And so the multiplicity is going to show the pair of zero as a minimum and the asterisk for multiple as the maximum. That's sort of a wild card about we don't know how many, but more than one. So that multiplicity resides on the right-hand side of that association or on the side nearest to the operation. And it tells the story. An operating room can be used for as few as zero operations or as many as many. We also have to specify the multiplicity going in the opposite direction. And so again, you want to think about even in fact putting your finger on the operation, starting your sentence there, an operation is performed in how many operating rooms? What's the minimum? What's the maximum? So think about our operating, our emergency room environment that had that operating room. An operation is performed in what's the fewest number of rooms? Well, an operation has to be performed in an operating room. What's the maximum number of rooms? Well, the operating operation is only performed in one room. And so in this case, the multiplicity would be one to one. There's a minimum of one operating rooms needed and a maximum of one. That means that an operation is going to be associated with one and only one operating rooms. You need to perform that analysis for every association in your class diagram. And so here I'm showing the complete diagram. A piece of equipment could be used in zero operations at a minimum. Again, we could buy a piece of equipment that hasn't yet been used in any operations, and we'd like to record that piece. 
and over time it's going to be used in many operations. An operation could be performed using no equipment or using many pieces of equipment. And so we see it this zero to many here. An operation could be performed um, without yet receiving any cash receipt. So an operation may be associated with as few as zero cash receipts. At the time of the operation, we haven't received anything back from the um, insurance company. The rules for how we receive cash receipts could also say, though, an operation is associated with many cash receipts. Think about the situation in which the insurance only covers partially and the patient is going to have to be pay the other, or the insurance is going to make multiple payments over time. An operation is performed by one and only one doctor. That was in our specifications for the initial problem. A doctor could perform zero operations. We could hire the doctor and they haven't yet done anything, or they perform many operations. An operation is assisted by one or many nurses. So we need to have at least one nurse in the OR for during that operation, and that uh, we could have multiple nurses. Again, that was in our initial scenario. A nurse performs zero or many operations. Operation is performed on one and only one patient. A patient could undergo zero operations, so you could come to the, to the emergency room but not need an operation, or could undergo multiple operations. Cash receipt is received by one and only one accounts receivable clerk. That's a really important control. We want to know who was the internal agent, again that's specified by the stereotype, who was the internal agent responsible for receiving that check and recognizing it in the system. So we have one and only one. That accounts receivable clerk could have entered zero cash receipts or many. Again, we could hire a person who hasn't yet done an activity, but we hope over time they're going to perform many. That cash receipt came from one and only one insurance company, but over time the insurance company could have placed, given us either zero or many cash receipts. A cash receipt is entered into one and only one cash account. A cash account could be created without any cash receipts, but over time we expect to have many cash receipts. This diagram shows the business rules or the multiplicities between each of the classes that are in our UML class diagram. You can continue this series of videos by continuing with the attribute video to learn about the last extension we're going to make to the UML diagrams.